Oh yeah, I come to you on these truths that all scripture as written is inspired of God and it is useful number 1 for teaching. Hallelujah. So if you're here and you're here to be taught, take the lesson. Hallelujah. Take the lesson. It's also profitable for reproof or rebuke. Take it. If it's correction, be corrected. And last, if you're to be trained, be trained in righteousness so that you'll be fully equipped for every good work. Amen. Uh, so today we're looking at accountability and before I continue I have a, a small story that I'd like to share with us. There was a man who regularly attended uh, community meetings, community gatherings here and there and uh, all of a sudden he just decided not to attend those meetings at all. And as a leader the leader was concerned about this man and he really wanted to find out how come this person no longer comes for the group meeting. So one cold night, the leader decided to go and visit that man who had departed from the community meetings. So he went there and he bishop, Hodi Akakari Bishua, and uh, he found the man was somewhere pole pole akiota motoyake, and uh, he came in, greeted the person, without saying a word, he joined him as they were just looking at the fire. Kitambo kulikuwa na maji ya kuangalia candles ikiwaka. Na kama ulikuwa mtu wa enzi zangu, by the way I'm very old, I thank God that I look young. Amen. Kitambo watu wangeza jitetewa seme, it's the anointing, hallelujah. But that's not the thing anyway. There, there was magic when you would look at a fire and just stare at it. Just like that. Say to Nastea Kwasimu when you remember through the menti questions. Uh, we there's so many distractions that are about there. So they were there, seated nicely, just looking at that fire. And the leader came, took one stick that was firing, and he placed it candle. And the man was fascinated. He was there watching. And as he was looking at what the leader was doing, there was still great silence, save for the fire that was burning. And he observed that that stick that the leader had actually taken away from the fire, slowly it started to subside to the point that it just became cold and black charred with the fire that was around him. And when the time came for the leader to leave, before he left, he never said anything. He just took that stick, returned it to the fire, and almost like magic, that stick started lighting up. Accountability. What comes to mind when you look at that word, accountability? When you look at scripture, you examine it carefully, you will find there is always a combination of two words and I'd like you to help me say this word. The first word is one. Hallelujah. Say one. one. And the second one is another. another. Say another. another. So this, com the combination of these two words, like for example, you'll find encourage one another, love one another, serve one another, comfort one another. And there is almost certainty that there is power when people are together. Why? Because we draw strength from one another. So God intended to share our lives in the context of community, not as individuals. Today, I happened to be, when I was coming here, I met somebody also just coming out from the apartment that I was coming in. I was like, hey, hey, hi, how are you? Mzuri uh, sana. So you also live here? Yeah, me naishi pale. As in Yani, that's how our world today is made to shape. We live as individuals. But God never intended that for us to live as individuals, but rather as a community. And why as a community today? When you move around, you'll find this word accountability is something that is missing. People decide to isolate themselves because we don't trust one another. We are not honest to one another. We are not watching over each other's soul. Kwa sababu gani, mind your own business. 
but is that what God has called us for? When you look at accountability on the other side, it provides so much spiritual growth because when you're together, it gives you that space where you can be honest to one another, you can confess your sins so that you'll be saved, you can celebrate your victories, you can pray for one another like we'll be celebrating uh, Pasi uh, ordination on the 26th here in church. So together, we process what God intends us to know when we come together as a community. And when you look at the New Testament, all that writing, there is no concept of Christianity where we are supposed to live in isolation. So I'd like to ask you, even as I continue, what e-group are you in? Where are you connected during the week where you come together, pray over one another, just be accountable to one another? Where are you connected? And if I am to summarize my sermon today, a place for accountability, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, all the way to 47, that does it for me. What were the believers doing then, Kitambo? One, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Devotion to teaching. No distractions, no phones, no nothing. You are just there devoted to the teachings of the apostles. What are they doing again? Fellowshipping together. Breaking bread together. And last, prayers. Mimi ni memaliza samoni yangu tuneza enda nyumbani. Hallelujah. So, I would define accountability as where one is committed, there is commitment to a group of believers where the group are mutually submitted to the word of God, where they care for one another and they take responsibility for one another. So when you ask Nivine, what when you look at that accountability, what do you see? I see responsibility. I see stewardship. I see unity. I see God commanding a blessing or not account of us being together. So today I'll limit myself to the environment that we are in, and that is in the church. And I'm going to assume Hebrews 10, 24, 25, and I'm going to assume that we are all together in this, and we are, we've made those careful considerations, and we are there together. So we are accountable first to God. We are accountable to God. Why? Because nothing is hidden to God. You cannot hide anything from God. When you look at, when you look at, or when you Google that word accountability, Christian accountability, there is a scripture that comes to mind, and that is uh, Romans chapter 14 and verse 12. That's what will come to mind. It says, so each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. And I like to see how many different versions render this word. NLT says, we are going to give a personal account when you look at ESV, it says each of us will give an account of himself to God. KJV talks about each of us shall give an account of himself to God. What happens? You have to take the truth from him. You get to know what really happened. But here the Bible in Atwambia, on that day, we are going to give an account of each and everything that we've done whilst we are here. What's the background to Romans 14, 12? It was this time that Jesus actually was the Lord of the Sabbath. When you look at it in Romans chapter 14, when you look at it, so Paul was extending an arm to welcome the weak people who are in faith, and he was urging believers not to quarrel over opinions to do with eating, which dates that there is, uh, to days that are important to honor God. That's Paul was just extending an arm of invitation to non-believers, and then Paul was cautioning believers not to pass judgment on fellow brethren because all of us we are going to give this account to God. So what does this Romans 14, 12 imply? Number one, there is a moral giver, and that is God. We are accountable to God because he is the one who's given us the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20, when you look at it, God made to party all the Ten Commandments. There's a time Eric Alikuja kai divide into two, and then you could observe actually that out of those commandments, Indotunapata, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind and soul. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And 
ukiangalia the first commandment to the fourth commandment loving god the fifth the the, the fifth all the way to 10 tunapata loving your neighbor amen so god is there he is the one who is giving us all these laws and what about people who are not exposed to the bible are they also going to give an account of themselves to god i have seen i have observed since uh, pastor jones uh, coming here and preaching kumekuwa na the call for people to be born again whether we responded here whether we responded online whether we responded in our hearts and we went home born again we may not know but there is actually no excuse why because everything that god wanted people to know it is already exposed to them when you look at romans 120 talks about for his etern- for his invincible attributes namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so you are not having any excuse as to why you don't know god as to why you don't have that saving knowledge in you there is no excuse whatsoever and i believe with my heart when you understand romans 14:12 it is important because i'm fully convinced that if you truly love god and you're accountable to him you won't struggle being accountable also to fellow human being because umeelewa what accountability is as far as romans 14:12 is concerned then I ask myself a question accountable of what what are we going to be accountable of number one is gifts and talents I came to this church I'll give my own personal testimony and I never wanted to do anything I said I was going to look for a church and nitakuja tu kwa church ni kuwe anatenda na niwe nakaa huko nyuma but I thank God for two friends that i never knew were coming to this church one of them is eric muiti hallelujah <laughs> the other one is an kahindi and they were elated when they saw me i remember an alinichukua mpaka kwa pastor pastor huyu mtu msimuache huyu mtu fanyeni mbili tatu When I when, when pastor got to know one or two things that I do I reserved myself to serve with the sound team and the tutor age of uh, my brother there Tony so, gifts and talents Romans 11:29 the bible says for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable I know there are some of us ministers of the word tuko na watu hapa God am our gift but you are comfortable seated wherever we are and you don't want to be accountable to that gift that God amekupatia let me say ngakurudisha tu Romans 14:12 one day you're going to be accountable you're going to be accountable and you'll tell God I gave you a gift what did you use it for what did you use it for some of us will say ah you know mimi nilishacha hapo kwa ile church nilikuwa so hii place ndiko mazee stack story nyingine There is no perfect church. If you find one and invite, ni invite ni ende nione. And whatever church you go to, please, wende unaenda kuyaribu kama kuna perfect church uko nje. First Corinthians 12:7 to each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. That gift that you have, you have to use it. You have to use it. There is no excuse. Mungu atakuuliza I love what we were challenged last week. Tuliambiwa ambia God akurevilie. Huyu mtu yuko kando yangu. Huyu mtu wako hapa kando yangu. What's God's purpose as far as he's concerned? We are challenged to spur one another towards goodness. Hallelujah. So, tukiendelea. What are we going also to be accountable of? Number two, ni our lives. No creature is hidden from his sight but all 
are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Hebrews 4.13. Careless word. That's the third one. Careless word that we say. We are going to be accountable as far as that is concerned. Remember the big topic up there is we are accountable to God. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 35. The Bible says, I'll read from uh, verse 35 all the way to 37. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless, another version renders it as idle word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. Background to this word, the Pharisees were there observing what the disciples of Jesus were doing. And being a Sabbath, we know God, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. He had healed somebody with a withered hand. And he had healed a blind and a mute person. But what were the Pharisees saying? Jesus is operating by the power of Belzebu. And you know, Belzebub. Out of your heart, Missouri Sana. And then you prince of demons and Atokea Mahali. And somebody says something, you are like, oh my goodness. That careless word you say, when somebody is operating in the spirit of God, and you throw that careless word out of there. Bible in Asema, Utaku accountable to it. And Number four, good or bad deeds. Tena nitaongelea. Kuna careless word, kuna good or bad deeds. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse six. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Verse eight, we are of good courage and we will rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Whether good or evil. What good deed have you done to the body of Christ? What evil do you think you need to repent of before the day of reckoning comes? Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 says, as far as accountability to God is concerned, the end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed, every deed, into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11.9, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth. Rejoice, young man, in your youth. And let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. If you are to forget whatever Nesema, just know that you are going to be accountable to God. What you say, what you do, the things you do in the house of God. The second part of this, I'd like to look at it and talk about accountability to fellow brethren. When you are asking the mentee question today, and you're saying what hinders you from your daily walk with the Lord. Some of us, we've talked about phones and everything. When you have accountability people, these are the things that you go and confess. Mutatakuliza, hey bro, tukona Kesha that is coming. Tukona, if I may say, maybe prayer and fasting. Did you fast today? I remember we were so zealous in those days of old. 
tungeangalia ni nani ya kula in fact ungekaribishwa kwa nyumba ya mtu na nakuofa chai lakini pale tu anataka tu kuangalia Ukien, ukisema tu sawa ilete atakuja hey, you're not fasting and there accountability ingeanzia papo hapo unaona say to na we deny ourselves food na in the pretext of tuna tuna fast look at it nicely mwingine ni at cool lose weight if fasting yet tu ni lunch atukuli tuseme ni ukweli si ndio ni lunch atukuli because tunapata ya First in Alaga in Alaga 6. Ah very good. Nitaanza 6. Ah no, juu nimeamka late kidogo. Wacha niamke, nianze 7. So before 7, unahakikisha umekula githeri, umekula kila kitu na kila kitu. And then unajua enye hii itanipeleka. Kazi yangu inakuanga mzito. So by the time inafika lunch time, I'll not be able to do what? At least I'll, I'll still have some energy left. And then you can't wait for Six o'clock kufika Six inafika tu hivi wewe na chakula ndio hiyo you said kuna prayer and fasting that's coming up submitted to the word of god we care for one another we take responsibility for one another accountability to fellow brethren now the lord has gifted us with e group leaders ecclesia leaders amen If you're a leader here, can we just clap for our leaders? In this day and age is not easy to be an e-group leader. You may not know what happens background by the time unaona watu wamekuja hapa. It may take a lot of tears and sweat for our e-group leaders to nudge us all the time hey kujedi tufanye hivi let's meet let's do all that kind of i acknowledge the kind of work that the e-group leaders wanna fanya in our midst and may god bless you may he increase you may he give you the patience to continue because this day and age there's so many distractions as far as uh, just serving or ministering the house of god because of all these distractions The Bible says when you look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 8. I'm sorry today learn to apart ya verse mingi sana. Romans 12 verse 8 talks about the gifts that were lot were konazo. Talks of the one who exalts in his exaltation. The one who contributes in generosity. The one who leads you're supposed to lead with zeal. Sawa sawa. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Now, the Bible challenges us as people who are under leaders that we need to remember these leaders for example hebrews chapter 13 and verse 7 the bible says remember your leaders those who spoke to you the word of god who is your immediate leader even when you're serving here if you belong to an e group it means your e group leader is your immediate leader the bible says that you're supposed to remember them Now, an accountability now on the part of the leaders. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Me that word it's so loaded. If you're a leader in this group, it should make you actually shake because if I am to imitate you, what am I going to imitate you knowing that at awewe in the last day when you're accountable to God whatever things that is seen by the time you imitate it it's something that you have to see sindio i have a small daughter uh, her age is hi 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 no men to kona excuse when it comes to numbers isipokuwa pesa to kona hii side to kona nini anyway i have a 10 year old girl and uh, nilikuwa nimetoka tu kwa bafu hallelujah na nikitoka kwa bafu niko na tawel na kaniona nilikuwa nimetoka kwa bafu the next thing tulimuona pia yeye ametoa top anatembea around kwa nyumba kama baba when you imitating it is something that you see what visible things as a leader we are able to see and emulate from you as a leader remember your leaders if you are here you don't pray for your leaders when you are praying 
I know we are told here to come every day for the Wednesday prayer meetings. But when you're praying, please remember all the leaders that you have, whether wako sawa or not. Ushai kuwa in a place whereby the Lord maybe has gifted you more than your leader or you have more expert than your leader. And you find your leader being as inadequate or somebody who's not qualified for the position. And sometimes you find yourself trying to outshine that leader. You're not doing the right thing. You're not doing the right thing. Remember that leader. There is a reason why God amemweka in that place. There's a reason why God amekueka chiniake. Maybe God anakutek through a lesson. He wants you to learn submission. Maybe God wants you to learn humility amidst all that you know. God anataka uwe humble. But how many of us were tunachukua hiyo lesson? How many of us unaweza kuwa submitted to somebody that you know you are better than them and you are not there trying to outshine them or making them look funny in front of others? Bible says remember them. Now, when you go further down that chapter Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17 The Bible says obey your leaders and submit to them for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account let them do this with joy and not groaning for that will be of no advantage to you pray for us for we are sure that we have a clear conscience desiring to act honorably in all things it is one thing to be a leader it is another thing to be led sometimes you find that when you been given a group to lead or there are people who are under you you find sometimes you don't have the joy of doing that work or doing that responsibility and it is because kuna wengine wetu kuna wengine wetu tumetumwa hallelujah sijui kama wewe ndio ulio ametumwa but there are some of us tumetumwa and we make the work of our leaders to become not joyous at all <laughs> bible inatuambia as they are leading us let them lead with joy and not with groaning and then as i finish niko karibu kumaliza accountability to members within the ecclesia group iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another that is proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17 Shaiweka chuma pamoja. Oh wait. Mumesikia hiyo? Hizo ni mashilingi ziko kwa mfuko yangu. Na zikiwa pamoja it is said wazina make that a clink clanging kind of noise. And by the end of the day you find that zikiwa nani zina zinaweza ji inaitwaje hii ku sandpaper inaweza they can sandpaper one another mpaka zikuwe very 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 smooth by the end of the day so the bible says there is iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens one another we are not all knowing we cannot say that sis indio the information that god has it's only limited to us no but what you know i i mix it with somebody else within the ecclesia group and tunashikana na ule mwingine anasema something and out of that tunapanda pole pole we find pole pole tunaenda tuki grow let me ask a question and i want us to infer really deeply in our hearts at what point can you say that i am spiritually mature at what point can you say that enyewe pastor kevin ni spiritually mature When you get that answer utanipata huko kwa sound nikuanga huko nyuma unaweza kuja utaniambia we are encouraged to intentionally within the ecclesia group to coach intentionally to guide intentionally to challenge 
intentionally to encourage one another to do good works. And why are we sup- why are we challenged to do that? It is for God's glory. We have fellowship together for God's glory. The Bible say that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. We are encouraged to challenge one another because God, before the foundations of the world, had predestined us to good works. Imagine as God was uh, creating this earth, he knew there'll be a John somewhere. He knew there'll be a Jerry somewhere. Nanjeri, this is the work that is cut out for Jerry when he comes and joins this assembly at NCKR. God already had predestined what you will be doing here. But because we're not being accountable one to another, we're not letting our lights shine. We decide that to tenda chinia, we tutawashata etu, lakini tunayeka hapa chini. We decide that we, I don't want so many dramas. I just want to come to church and that's it. Don't want to be accountable one to another. Let your light shine so that, before others, so that people may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Predestined to good work. Ephesians 2.10, the Bible says, we are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Imagine, God had already predestined, uh, he had cut out a clear path for you to walk in. He'd given you that gift before the foundation of the world. And he knew when you come to this assembly, or whatever assemblies that you attend to, or visit other people who are online, God had already cut out that work for you. But the Bible is challenging us and telling us, walk in that. You're supposed to spur one another on towards good works. Hebrews 10, 24. The Bible talks of it being a consideration. Let us consider how we may spur one another or stir up one another to love and good works. Not neglecting, meeting together, a summary in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as we see the day drawing near. For example, I, I really thank God for Mwiti and uh, and Anne wamekuwapo wake ni sukuma 24-7 that upon a vine uh, because I know they know me way back. They know me way back and they, you may be sharing also the kind of story that I do have and there's no one maybe to nudge you or to urge you to do something as far as uh, serving the Lord is concerned within this assembly. But my prayer to you is Make that careful consideration that you will do what God intended for you to do even before the foundation of this earth. The Bible challenges us even as being accountable one to another that we are supposed to be models of uh, models to the world in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. I talked about when People imitate you. They have to see what it is that you're doing. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, Paul alikwana urged Timothy na namambia, let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example. Set the believers an example. In speech, what you say. In conduct, what you do. In love, outward expression. Inward, outward expression. In faith, and in purity, until I come, then Paul continues and says, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation and to the teaching. So the question is, where are you plugged in as a member of this church? Where are you plugged in? Which fellowship can you say that you're on? I look at us and I'm thinking like, what? even right here, in a fellowship of maybe uh, 10, 10, 10 groups, but the numbers that are just here. But where are you plugged in? Where do you go to? Do you understand that first accountability is to God? 
Second, accountability is to the leaders that God has placed over you and accountability also to fellow brothers and sisters who are there. I love what Pastor Kevin is doing, especially with the men who have attended one of those meetings. And we are just able to just be vulnerable and just talk as men. The enemy out there wants to let us believe that Nikugumu. And you'll agree with me. If, if, if I decide not to say Nikugumu, Mtakwazileza, hi, what do you mean? Nikugumu. Eh, hey, Nikugumu, Nikugumu. <laughs> but do we believe it when God says, in all things, in all things, all things, they work for good. Sindio? But apana nikugumu, eh, dunia manze nikugumu. There's an extract uh, from Leadership Alive, Dr. Christopher P. Mead, and uh, this is something that uh, he'd put up, and I just took one or two of those things. Uh, so allow me to read it. Uh, first, uh, he talks about when a blade is dull, when a blade is dull, it takes more force to use, and it's also harder to control. When you're not sharpened one to another, kama uko nini, kama uko blunt, we are going to take more force for you to cut through anything. Okay, I love cooking. Okay? And uh, one of the prerequisites, anytime na ingianga kitchen, my wife really loves it, but on Sundays, sometimes, once in a while. Okay? But the first thing muwa nafanya, even before I do anything, na juanga visu zaki azikuangi sharp. And there is nothing that I dislike. Selu unenda kukata nyanya, manzi, unonena Wale wana katanga nyanya waneza identify na mimi. Mi nataka ukiekelea, inakata. Inaenda kuenda. When you're dull, when you're not belonging to any e-group, you don't know what's happening. How do you Bible? There's somebody who will say, how do you have to The best place for you to start is in an e-group. Anzia hapo. Get to know what people do in those e-groups. Kiwa sharp, ni raisi. Kukata, na kuendelea. Engage in regular, honest conversations. Accountability, truth-telling, crucial conversations, confronting difficult issues, be hard on issues, and be soft on people. Talks of engaging in regular, honest, no, I've talked about, discover and develop people's strength and passions. When do you unlock their potential? As a leader, especially this, I think this is for the leader, yeah? Uh, you know who ni strength yake, who ni weakness yake, then you're able to actually use the strengths. You're able to talk on the issues. You're very hard on the issues, but you're soft on that person at the same time. Then talks about build genuine relationships. Squeezy relationships ni plastic. Hallelujah. Watch out to say me iko. Sindio? Yeah. Ah! Kevin, ukwaje bana? Great to see you this Sunday. Uko salama? Ah, tutonana. Good. Ah, see you. See you next Sunday. Sawa. Next Sunday come. Oh, ah! Umekuwaje bana? KPLC imetufanya mambo bwana. Hey! See you on Sunday. Sawa. Sunday comes. The same thing continues over and over and over. When are we going to build genuine relationships? When will you just call somebody and be, hey bro, I just called to say, just find out how are you doing? When are we going to build these gen genuine relationships? Squeeze in a kuwagani, what can I get from you? So Pasi, oh yeah, kuna kuja for practice, sawa, sawa, and that's it. Pengina ujui, na kuja practice, nyumbangu ilikuwa imefungwa. Maybe naishina bradhangu, alinifukuza. Niko inji in the street, but I'll come. I know I'm serving, I'm doing it as unto the Lord. I'll come here. And I'm here, I'll do what I need to do, and then I'm gone. Sometimes, what we need, ni tu mtu kutuliza. How are you doing? How are you? Lakini, karibu Kenya, karibu Nairobi. Sindio? Ukoaje ah niko sawa. Kwisha. Build genuine relationships. Share the credit. 
It's amazing what gets done when no one hogs the credit and how something simple motivates everyone. Come on, join me, Pastor Kevin. I'm fan. Hey, Pasi, that was really nice. Pasi Kevin, ana chukua the credit, but pia ana jambia too. It's unto the Lord. I don't know whether you've talked, uh, looked at somebody dressed very beautifully, kutoka juu mpaka chini na mbele. Eh, but leo kuna vile. Leo kuna vile. Ni bwana. Ni Yesu. Si uchukue tu hata pia ukipewa. Just take it. Just take the credit and say, "Wow, oh, thank you." Na yeah, kama leo Eh hey, kukuja ku preach hapa ni ngumu nilinunua kiatu. Eh. Hey. <laughs> ah, Wacha pia mimi niseme ni Bwana. Haleluya. And last, have fun doing it. Have fun doing it. And I'd like to conclude this way. Number one, it's never too late to join an e-group. It's never too late to join an e-group. E meaning ecclesia, church. It's never too late. Still challenging us to ignite the fire, just like that analogy of that castic that was kwa dinje. Rudi ndani. If you're not in dani, rudi ndani. Get back. And live as a community as was in the beginning. There's a powerful prayer that Jesus in the, in, in um, when he was praying in John 17. There's a powerful prayer. I don't know how many of us you've encountered that prayer. It's a powerful prayer, but Christ alikuwa anashinda kisema Wacha wakuwe one as we are one. Wacha wakuwe one as we are one. Let me uh, allow me to read it. John chapter 17 verse 11. I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name. It's such a highly high priest kind of prayer which you have given me that they may be one even as we are one when you go down to the same chapter verse 20 i do not ask only for this but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they may all be one just as you father are in me and i in you that they may also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me verse 22 the glory that you have given me i have given to them that they may be one even as we are one i in them you in me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. Psalms 133 and verse 1. Inonge it is good and pleasant when brothers dwell together in unity. And it is my prayer even as I pen this off that God will lead you to a trusted person. And again to ask them to form an accountability partner or accountability relationship. If you've been instructed today, take the instruction. If you've been rebuked, repent. If you've been corrected, chukua. Amen.